Hello photographers, we're going to talk about a really fun topic today. Today we are going to talk about using classic cameras with modern film. Not just any film though, we're talking about Fuji Instax Mini Film. This is an instant film. You often use it with something like this Fuji Instax Mini 9, uh, or maybe you've got one of the fancier Mini 90 uh, retro style cameras. The idea behind this here is to use this newer instant film technology and combine it with the quality glass found in an older medium format style camera. So a couple of topics we're going to go over, a little bit just about Fuji Instax in general, and then we're going to get a little bit into why you might want to use it in one of these old cameras, and in fact I'll get into a demonstration of how to use it in one of these old medium format cameras. So first, let's talk a little bit about Fuji Instax. I don't think there's much to say about it. Most people are familiar with these little, especially the little Instax Mini 9 camera, um, or again, like I said, one of the fancier Mini 70 and Mini 90 cameras. Uh, many of you photographers, whether you're a digital or a film photographer, probably have one of these or have used one of these at a party or a wedding or something. You know, they're really fun little cameras. You get that old school uh, Polaroid vibe. Each sure it's a little bit smaller uh, picture than you might get from a Polaroid style camera, but it's relatively inexpensive and it's really fun. You know, you can go to a party. Um, if you're working on stuff, you take little instant photos, give them to your friends, and uh, they've got a neat little keepsake memento. The only problem I really have with these Instax cameras, um, especially with the cheaper ones, but really the more expensive ones aren't much better, is that they're just using kind of a cheap lens in them. They're a plastic lens. They're, you know, designed for a fun instant photo. They're not particularly designed for the fastest, highest quality because it's just a small little wallet sized photo, especially for these minis. So you really don't need super high quality. However, one of the fun things that I've learned you can do with this is pair it up with one of your classic medium format cameras. Um, and it doesn't have to be something fancy like this Minolta Auto Cord. You can use a real basic brownie camera or basically anything that takes some sort of 120 or 620, some sort of medium format roll film. You can get some really, really cool photos out of them. So talk a little bit about using it with one of these cameras. Um, why would I want to use it with, you know, let's say this Minolta Auto Cord we have here. Let's move this stuff to the side a little bit. Um, Auto Cord here, great camera. It's along the lines of your classic uh, Rolly Flex, Rolly Cord style twin lens reflex. This means you've got one lens that you look through here, and there's another lens with a shutter on it that takes the actual picture. Um, these were great, great cameras for walking around, really great cameras for taking portraits. Um, the neat thing about this Fuji Instax, too, is it's an ISO 800 film. So you're going to be able to take a picture in relatively low light, even with something like this auto cord that's only got an f3.5 lens. Plenty of light in your average room that's maybe got a couple lights in it. You know, maybe not a, a dim concert, a dim bar, or something like that, but uh, something with uh, just your average you know, 40, 60 watt light bulbs in it's going to be plenty enough light uh, to do a nice little handheld photo with it. Um, Obviously, the uniqueness of it is kind of fun. So not only are we getting, you know, your typical Instax photo here, you know, it's a nice photo, you can keep it, um, but when you start moving into using these medium format cameras, you start getting, um, it might be a little hard to see here, but you start getting depth of field effects. You get the look of the lens. So if this, this auto cord has a classic four element Zeiss Tesser style lens in it. So you get that nice, nice rendering out of that. Um, plus, it's just sharp. You know, you take a lens like and stop it down quite a bit. It's going to be hard to see on this video here, but you can get a pretty nice, sharp portrait, picture, whatever you're taking a photo of, and you get whatever character comes through from any of these cameras. So you get an old box camera or something like that. You might get some vignetting. You might have soft edges. You're going to get a really cool look. So I think the next thing we're going to talk a little bit about is how do you use Instax film with one of these cameras? So give me just a minute to get this set up and I'll be right back. Okay everyone, we're back here. I've got some stuff set up. We're going to talk a little bit about how you use this Fuji Instax film and get it inside one of these old style medium format cameras. Um, so 
If you're not familiar with the Fuji Instax film, it comes in these uh, little film cartridges. There's 10 shots in each cartridge, and they're, they're basically labeled with a little yellow dot here. Matches up with, you may not be able to see that little yellow dot on the Instax camera. And there's some little lips here, so it really it will actually only fit in one way. Doesn't fit in this way, only fits in this way. So on your Instax camera, of course, you put it in, you close the lid, hit the shutter button, and what it's going to do is spit out this, what's called dark slide here. So this is just a piece of black plastic. It's inside of this film cartridge to keep this film from getting exposed. So we'll talk about this in a minute. Just a reminder, in case I don't tell you later, don't throw these away. Hold on to them, especially if you want to do this Instax in an old camera. It'll come in super duper handy. Let's talk a little bit about the Instax cartridge, because one thing about this is all of this loading has to be done in the dark. So if you've got a film changing bag, you can do it within in that, which is really handy if you're out and about at an event, or if you just happen to have a dark room you can pop into, get the lights off, maybe put a towel across that bottom so there's no light sneaking in. Um, you can do that in here. But once it's dark, you can't see anything. So we've got to make sure that we keep everything lined up. So remember what I said about the yellow being the top here. When you go into your dark room, you want to make sure this yellow is pointed up. We're going to go ahead and flip this over, set it straight down like this. That way we know everything's in alignment and every, every other step we do is going to keep everything in alignment. We never, ever, ever want to spin this around. It's going to confuse the heck out of you and you won't be able to get that film loaded. Now I will say, when you're first working with this, it's really, really good to have an old film cartridge so you can play around with this. Because I'll demonstrate it here in the light and I'll tell you what, it's going to be a lot easier for you to practice in the light, getting film out, getting stuff set up in the camera. So basically, what you're going to do is take your film cartridge. We're taking everything into the dark here. So if you've never shot anything out of it, the first thing you're going to want to do is get this dark slide out. Um, so it's going to say right on here, do not press right here. That's actually where the sensitive film part is. So you don't want to press very hard. But in fact, we are going to have to kind of push this film out. So through these little holes in the back, just put a little bit of pressure with your fingers. I don't know if you can see that. Just a little bit to make sure everything's pushed to the front here, but it's actually the back of this film cartridge. And you'll see there's a little plastic lip on this. Um, we do have to be a little bit careful. These things can get a little bit crinkled. Um, in fact, when you save your old cartridge and we're working on this stuff in the dark, just go ahead and tear that off. It'll make life a little easier. So first step, we push up on this. And we just ever so carefully kind of push on the bottom of this dark slide. And then we're going to carefully pull it out. You do want to be careful. We can get a little bit of scratches on this film emulsion. Um, it's pretty tough. And it's instant film, so nobody's really going to care if you got a couple scratches on it. We are doing some experiments. So we pull this out. Go ahead and want to set that aside somewhere. Real important to keep this handy um, because there's 10 live film cartridges in here. Now, of course, this is old film, so uh, you're not missing anything. And so what you're seeing here is the back side of the film. This Fuji Instax, let me get my example here, it exposes through the back side of the film here. So if you're looking at an already used shot, it's the one that's got the developer packet at the top, and it has uh, all the writing on it. It does not expose on the side you will see. And, in fact... You can see that here. Just remember, when we put this cartridge in the camera, everything is backwards. So when that film picture spits out, it is actually going to spit out like this, and then you'll start seeing the picture developing as you're looking at the back of the camera. So again, if I haven't confused you yet, it goes in this way, but we're working with everything backwards. So we want to load this film in. So again, a little bit of light pressure on the very back here. And there's no ands, ifs, or buts about this. You've got to touch this film to get it out. So you're going to try to do the best you can to keep it as, to use as light of a touch as possible. Um, try to have clean fingers. I suppose if you had some nice nitrile gloves, that might help a little bit. Um, I would just use my fingers. And so with that back pressure, we just push up a little bit. 
and you see it coming right through here, as soon as, as soon as you can feel it come through here, we want to pull from the top. Do you remember you have the developer packet here, so don't, uh, don't caveman it and smush that real hard. Just try to kind of pull it from the top. And then whatever you do, do not move this piece of film. We do not want to flip it over. We do not want to turn it any, any sort of way. If you need to set it down, go ahead and set it down directly the way you have it because this is the orientation we're going to want the film in. Um, and this is why I say practice a little bit with these cameras, because each of them has a little bit different film gate in it. Hopefully you don't have to spin your film all the way around like this to fit within that film gate. You shouldn't have to, um, but if you do, it's an extra step to get it back in. So again, we pulled this film out in this direction. Now remember what I said, this film exposes through the back side. So we do have to flip the film in order to line it up in the camera. And this is where it gets hard. Um, as you'll see, the Fuji Instax film isn't exactly the right fit for a 6x6 camera in here, and you're going to be putting this in in the dark. So you just have to kind of know where your developer packet ends, and you've got to kind of just play with this with already exposed film so you can kind of get a good idea of how to set this in. Um, the best thing to do is just kind of feel around in the dark, try to find some film rails, and just lightly line it up against it, and then just do your best to get it back in here. You'll have a little bit of a black edge, like you see here. You don't actually see it on the bottom, but it's there on this frame. Um, you got to get it lined up. So remember, we did have to flip that so that um, the developer packet side is facing forward. That's the way the image is going to come through. So from here, you close that back up, and I find that, you know, as long as you're not shaking these cameras around real crazy, be a little bit careful with it. This is, this is good to go. Um, get your shutter cocked up. Get your shutter speeds and things lined up. Remember, this is an ISO 800 film. So if you've got a nice metering app on your phone or something, um, you can go ahead and do that. Or if you've just got a way to calculate it normally, um, go ahead and calculate it. This Instax film isn't super duper... Um, high latitude. It's not like a portrait that you can shoot like five stops over or two stops under. You do want to try to get it pretty close. A um, couple of pointers if you're out in the bright sunshine using that sunny f16 rule. It would be one eight hundredth of a second at f16. None of these cameras go up to an eight hundredth of a second. Um, typically two hundredth is what you're going to see in a lot of old cameras. Some of them will go to four or five hundredth. Um, and that tends to run a little slow anyway. Um, so, you know, 200th, so let's see, uh, I say 800th at F16. So F22 would be 1 400th, F32 would be 1 200th. So if you can stop down to F32 at 1 200th, um, that's great. If you're using something like an old Kodak, um, Brownie, or if you've got something like a, uh, a Duaflex or an Argus, one of those box camera type TLRs that have a single shutter speed, those are typically running a 30th or a 40th. So basically, you're not going to get bright sunshine out of that. You definitely need to find some shade. Um, even cloudiness probably is going to be too much for one of those. Um, again, like I said, with one of these TLRs, um, the really nice thing about them is they've got a, a leaf shutter in here. So it's a really quiet shutter. If I uh, get this one set up here, what you'll see is, let's see if we can get this wound. So we're set on bulb right now. So let's go ahead and set this. Um, I'd be super confident hand holding this thing at a 30th of a second. I don't even know if you're gonna hear it on the video, but we'll get real quiet for a second. And 1 30th at f3.5 is going to do pretty well with this 800 film. Uh, you know, if you're using something else, uh, say, you've got, say you've got one of these really cool old folding cameras, right? And uh, it doesn't have any sort of range finder. It maxes out at 200th. So, you know, take it out into the sunshine, stop her way down to uh, f32, and, and basically you got, basically have a focus-free camera, you know, you... Uh, I'll bring it back to maybe 15, 20 feet. You're guaranteed to get maybe 7, 8 feet out to infinity easily. You know, you can use your little, uh, if 
viewfinder here, or uh, in this case, this one's got a little sports finder. Look through that, frame it up real good, and uh, you're gonna get yourself a fun, fun little photo out of it. In fact, speaking of F32 and bright sunshine, that's what we got out of that little camera there. Just a fun little experiment. So again, we talked a little bit about loading this up, taking some pictures. Um, so the next thing we got to do after we've taken a picture, obviously we only got one, we can't advance through a bunch of them here, we've got to get back in the dark. So get that dark bag back out, go back into that dark room if you will. Then we need to set some stuff back up. A couple other points here. I didn't talk about it, um, but before we left the dark room here, um, always a good idea, like I said, keep this for two reasons. Number one, you can very carefully find the edge here of this and just carefully put this dark slide back in and then and you'll see it it kind of makes this little plastic bend so you want to be very careful but these are our remaining exposures um, definitely want to put them inside of a pocket or something um, just to try to keep them out of the dark um, generally what I do is take the camera in as soon as I've taken my film out go ahead and put this right back in the camera load it back up and then make yourself a note of how many film sheets you've pulled out of this. Because every time you open this up, you see it here, it goes back to start. And it's going to think you got 10 photos in there. The last thing you want to do is roll up to a party with one pack in there thinking you got 10 photos. When in reality, you've got four left. So always make sure to close that back up. Put it somewhere safe in the camera. is probably the safest place you can put it. Um, in case, unless you don't happen to have some sort of box or something, you can put it in and keep it dark. So now that you're done with it, a couple of things. It's going to depend on if you have an extra cartridge. You've already shot through your camera or not. Um, if you have an extra cartridge, makes your life a whole lot easier. You don't have to deal with dark slides and stuff. You basically just take that empty extra cartridge and we can put our film in it uh, to develop. I don't actually have an extra empty one. I've just got this one example one that we've put it back in. So here's what you can do if you don't. You take that back out of your camera again. Remember, we're always keeping this top up. We do have to flip it here in order to get this out. So what we can do here is, again, carefully pop this dark slide out. Remember, we're in the dark doing this, so you're not going to be able to see where you're at. So make sure when you set stuff down, if it's set to the side like this, you know what the top side is. This one's not too bad to feel the top side because it's got this long plastic slot and on the bottom side it has this singular little plastic tab here that's pretty easy to feel. Additionally, you feel this writing whereas it's smooth on the back side. So now we're in the dark. Let's go ahead and open up our camera. Now remember, the film that was in here got exposed through the back side, which is the way this would be when it's sitting in the camera. But now that we've taken it out and flipped it, what we have to do is make sure we take this film out. Again, try to handle by the edges. The nice thing about this is there's edges, so you're not touching that emulsion surface or anything. And we flip it back over. If for some reason, your camera didn't fit film in right and you had to flip it. Just make sure you remember that. It is dark, but you are going to be able to feel that this is a small part and this is a much bigger part here. What you're not going to easily be able to feel is which way the film's at. If you're really, really careful, you can kind of feel this is flat, um, but since this has developer in it, it'll bulge a little. So again, we shot through this way. We're just going to go ahead and flip it this way. And what we're going to do is kind of the same thing we did before. Try to hold it at the edges. And we're going to try to find that slot. So again, if you've got an empty one, what you can do is just take your film pack, put it somewhere safe in the dark, and just leave it off to the side if you've been storing it in your camera. And with an empty one, tear this plastic off. You don't have anything in here. All you got to do is just pop the one in here, and then you don't have to worry about extra pieces or anything being in there. But if you do reuse, go ahead and pop this in here. Not going to put the dark slide back in yet. Again, we've got to flip this around. You're not going to be able to see the yellow dots to line them up, but they do have this little ridge to make sure it pops in. 
correct. So we're going to go ahead and close that back up. We're going to close this camera up and I'm going to just go ahead and set it to the side. And what we need to do now is we need to get this out. So depending on which Fuji camera you have, again, the first exposure is going to just pop out the dark slide. With these Instax Mini 8 and Mini 9, Mini 7 type cameras, it's going to fire the shutter and it's going to fire the flash every time. So we've got to find something to cover this up with. And uh, I didn't prepare ahead of time, so I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. So as I was saying, what we've got to do is get this exposure out and get it developed. Um, depending on your camera, I'm not sure though, then a Mini 70, Mini 90, they might be fancier and like an old Polaroid, just try to spit this dark slide out as soon as you turn it on. Um, but this Mini 9 and the 8 and the 7, they're simple little things. Basically, you pop the lens out to turn it on, you hit the button, and it basically takes an exposure. So what we're gonna have to do is use our handy dandy towel here, um, try to use a little bit of a dark one, and we gotta cover this lens up. Um, this is the hardest part with this because the second you push one of these in just the slightest, tiniest bit, it turns the whole camera off. So you've got to be able to get enough around the lens so that it's not going to get light in from this flash, um, but not push it all the way in. So I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't in there, but there's just a, the orange light still on. Um, I'm going to cover it all the way and we're going to go ahead and hit the button. So you saw that it flashed, and then that's where our photo comes out. And if you did it right, of course, you're going to see the white or the, if you've got one of these color frames, I had the colored side. It's going to take a minute or two to develop. Um, if you did load it in wrong and it comes out this way, I'm not sure what it'll do. It'll probably still work um, because we already took the exposure through this back side of the film. It just, um, it's just going to look a little bit funny when it comes out. So you give it a couple minutes. And then you've got your wonderful, super duper, old school looking Instax exposure. So again, this isn't the fastest thing in the world that you can do. Um, you've got to do it one at a time. You need to have a dark place or some sort of dark room. But, you know, you find an old, find an old folding camera like this and you don't want to mess with roll film. Um, let me look here. In my bin of goodies and dead cameras, um, let's say you find one of these. You know, Grandpa had this old Kodak Duoflex sitting on the shelf, and it's just rusted and crusted. But, uh, hey, you know, you hit that button, and it's it's still able to take a picture. And, hey, we can we can see through. And maybe you can't see through it very easily here. Where is the lens? Hey, you can see through this. Um, but this thing takes 620 film. So unless you have a very special 620 spool, um, if you look at it here, it's a very special, super thin, tiny spool. It's really hard to get modern 120 film into these things. Um, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. This one, you will see I had to do one modification. Uh, a lot of older cameras have this little red window in them. Um, if, they, if they do, it's gonna let light through. You can't let that light through on this Instax, so. If you see here, we took a piece of uh, electrical tape. I've actually got two layers of it here just to make sure it's nice and covered up. Uh, we don't need that window to do this. But same thing, we went in the dark, we pulled this film out, flipped it over, and on this one, um, you know, I kind of had to figure out where to line it up. It doesn't have nice film rails here, so in the dark, you just have to, you just kind of have to guess, and it, it'll come out how it comes out. So in this, this case, um, you know, here's one of the test exposures we did. So you see, ah, uh, it's a little bit crooked. But who cares? You got a really cool instant photo out of it. So all sorts of stuff. You can use this Duoflex. You know, go back to this folding camera for a minute here. You know, these are really cool cameras. Um, this particular one, uh, like most folders, um, uses a 6x9 format. Um, this one here, if you actually look, I've got a little film mask so I can do the square format. Um, but the 6x9 is going to use up more of this frame. So you're not going to get these black borders at the top and bottom like you might get with a 6x6 type of camera. Um, and this one is actually pretty easy to put the film in because basically you just, in the dark, you find 
where this bellows is and it it's just basically just small enough that it fits right nicely in that bellows and that kind of covers the whole film area. And we, and I'll put this back up. This one, if you see here, is I don't know if you can see it very well. Let's see. It says six by six in there. Um, this other one says six by nine. So this has sliding cover, so I didn't have to put tape on it. But again, in this one, take her out in the sunshine, you know, put her all the way over to uh, 200 and all the way down to F32 and Oh, we'll focus it, let's say, around 15 feet or so. And we're probably good from 8 feet to infinity at F32. So basically, you know, hey, just use your little viewfinder here um, or even the sports finder, get everything in focus and, you know, get a really fun, cool shot. If you happen to have one of those dark changing bags, you know, then you can easily throw this in the dark bag, pop the film out, Pop it back into here and, uh, you know, pop that exposure off and you got a neat little instant photo. So I hope everybody found this kind of cool and kind of exciting. Um, I know there's tutorials out there on the web to do it, but I don't think I've everybody or ever seen uh, someone do a kind of a cool video on it. And, and, you know, I really think if you have an old camera like this and you have an Instax, do yourself the favor and try it. The worst thing you'll do is, eh, it doesn't turn out right. Maybe you get some light streaks or something in it. But, I mean, where else are you going to get, you know, an easy way to test one of these cameras if you don't want to deal with the, the roll film? Or, I don't know where I put the other one, one of those 620 cameras that you can't easily get film for. You know, or if you're a little bit more uh, accomplished in your photography journey, you can start using things like... Um, a nice wide open lens that has really neat look and feel to it. Oh, let's see what else we got here. Um, you know, here's one that was a little bit darker because I didn't have good metering. This is a really old 1936 Rolleiflex here. And so again, the corners and stuff are soft, but you get that really, really neat old school look out of these cameras that you just don't get. You know, with the Instax, you just kind of get, oh, well, there's there's harsh flash lighting, and it's good enough, you know. If you, you go to a party, you get, hey, here's a cool selfie I got uh, with one of our friends here. But it's just, you get a little bit more fun and creative possibilities with this kind of stuff. You know, you got photographer friends, and you show up, and you're like, hey, let me take your picture. Hop into a dark room or your changing bag, expose this, pop it out, and give them something they'll really, really remember. So I think that covers everything we had. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, you know, leave a comment. Um, any other topics you want to see, you know, let me know. Thank you.